gonna go back and redo this because this is already like another style, another tone, something totally different. Because you're also learning how to draw during all this process. Very long. It's a very long time. Yeah. Uh, so at some point you have to go. Hey, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Like it's gonna be different from the first page to the last one. Yeah. And, and deal with it. And I think you see it in most comics. Like unless the guy is like probably 40 years into the comic industry. Most books start one way, they end another, but two different styles. Mm -hmm. Do you guys make comics? Uh, is there anyone here that makes comics? Mm -hmm. No. Are you all just uh, comic readers? Readers. I'm sure you all most, most of you draw all your own stuff, whether it's professional or it's just for fun. Right. Yeah, right on. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the, the, the process of making art is uh, a meandering path of a mess. Sometimes you, you venture into the maze and you never come out, and hence some people never ship their stuff. And uh, I'm certainly guilty of this because I've made art, art work that I've written stories and I've done stuff in my own life to work that never went anywhere, purely because I got lost in the sauce. You know, like you, you, you know, you don't, you don't, yeah, you get lost in the sauce. You, you fall in love with your own characters too much. You, you hold the, the first two, three things that comes to your mind too precious. You know, you're like, Oh no, but that's after like two weeks. You're like, no, no, no. That's what the character is about. Uh, this, this is how it's gonna be. It's like, no, you, you shouldn't do that. Like every single egg that you lay in terms of idea needs to get smashed and be tested. You know, or, or else like you can never. Every new idea you have is just a stepping stone for the next one. Because as you grow as a person over the years, yeah. your understanding, your maturity, and taste and art will, will change as well and get better. Is that the whole like kill your babies thing? Like, yeah. Kind of yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's a very uh, uh, common thing in, in the art industry. Look, I, I think mo most people, like creative people, uh, you have to, to be able, okay, that was your first OC. You'll see there's a lot of like old deviant art. Hey bro, this is my OC. Uh, draw my OC. And people can get stuck on, in, in, on that, which it was the first character you made that was probably based on another character you really loved, so they're almost like a clone of it. Yeah. And you stick with this character for the next 10 years. Yeah. Um, and you don't kill your baby, but uh, murder him. <laughs> Throw him in the garbage. And like, get out of your comfort zone and bring something new, something, something that, that is yours. Uh, otherwise, I would just stick to uh, more like the little type of postings, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, those gotta go. Uh, sorry, but there are valid like there, there's a reason why people gear towards those things, right? Like there's a reason why you think people think Naruto's cool. There's a reason why certain anime characters are very appealing because their story arcs has been tried and tested. So this is where it kind of veers away from the art side about how good you are at drawing towards how good are is your understanding of, of character writing, right? All these characters they all follow the typical hero's journey route. You know, right. they, they 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 go through the trial and error process of uh, discovering who they're supposed to be, denying it, rejecting it, learning to be that person, failing, failing, succeeding, and then triumphing. Yeah, they, they always gotta have, and I, I and I believe I, I failed on that on, on my Mohammed main guy um, of giving the character um, what do you call it like like a redeeming quality, even if he, he might be a terrible dad or a terrible human or, or a coward. At some point. Um, your character needs to have some kind of arch, or oh, arc, the arc, arc, yeah, arc. Yeah. some kind of arc where um, he he go he. Is it? Is the whole thing like being a uh, being a great doesn't mean you you can fear things. Right? Yeah. You fear things. That's why you're great because you get over it. And so so that's that's what your character should have. <laughs> and I, I I think I didn't do that. I, I went for oh he's. He's terrible, and he ne like never he gets saved by some other guy. Mm -hmm. So he never actually overcomes his fear. Yeah. Uh, he never becomes brave. Only at the end, and he's saved to like to be continued for the second story. Mm -hmm. But don't do that. Uh, like your character and your main story, it's a guy you're following. Should have some morals, some some like um, some sort uh, of redeeming quality. Redeeming right? qualities. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. And, and that it could be a really good um, path for um, characters on the first 
want to if you guys didn't hear what she said, she said, um, you know, cowardice and the flaws in the character is, is in, they are integral pillars to building a relatable character, right? So it's not exactly like bad that your character has irredeemable traits, but it's also, it's, it needs to always be balanced, right? Yeah, even most anti-heroes, uh, characters that are kind of uh, bohemian badasses that are not your, your white bread guy, um, are still,
uh, you're making decisions, I'm following along, I'm not just getting side, uh, sidelined by like brand new events coming in. And that's kind of what I found missing from a lot of today's blockbusters is that uh, a lot of stories do have that quality to, to them where the characters are in a roller coaster ride. Uh, hence why I feel like
shapes um, uh, they communicate uh, a feeling. So a, a square shape is a, is a heavy shape, a very stable shape. A round shape is very feminine. It curves. Uh, it's a welcoming, uh, benign type of shape, unless you're a, a jellyfish or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, sharp okay. shapes with edges, uh, triangles. Those are scary shapes. Uh, predator Alien. type of shapes. Yeah. So. You can base your character silhouette and and and, and uh, curve language, uh, line language, uh, with based on specific very uh, geometrical shape, and that that alone will will communicate something about your character. Uh, a good example would be yeah, let's let's see uh, the Beast and Beauty and the Beast. Is it the dude's the triangle? With yeah. tiny, this is the riddle upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a giant triangle. Yeah. The, uh, everything is like comes from the chest. Yeah, um, even his uh, his uh, gown that he puts on later, he's like royal dressed. Yes, yeah. he's spiky. He's yeah. like he has like spiky stuff. Yeah. Even the hair is like it looks like horns. Um, so that's a motif. That's like, a motif. That's what you do. Like, wait, what's that saying? People says you do it once, it's an action. You do it two, it's a it's a it's a pattern. You do it three times, it's a motif. Yeah. So yeah. you gotta repeat these things over and over again. Things. Because, like it or not, us audience, we're not very smart yeah. at the end of the day. So you gotta like, just keep like hammering on the head till it, like, till it sticks, you know? Yeah, the character, uh, especially the design, the character, and that goes for games and, and, and comics, um, you, you have, in, in, in design you have what, motives? Mm -hmm. You have theme? Theme. Um, and, and, and the, well, the, the would the ge geometrical shapes fall into theme, or or that's something? But that's a good question because right. in my head, that those two words they almost mean the same thing. Um, it's just about how much you repeat and, and carry those themes. Yeah, well, uh, uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to explain without the visual aid. Yeah. But um, so. What's a good example you want to bring up again? Like like what what would help someone understand what makes. Uh, Design the character like that. How you repeat motifs and patterns in a, in a character to make a good design. Uh, so you would have. Let's pick a character. Well, uh, I mean, there are scenes like inside Disney itself, like in movies, like yeah. if you look at Snow White and you look at if you guys have seen Robin Hood, the dance scenes are very similar. Mm, right. But they're changing the character as well to fit that storyline. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're, yeah. I think, I think we're, yeah, because we're focusing on the, on the visual. The visual design. Uh, the visual design. Uh, I think you're yeah. talking more like narrative, uh, echoing of elements within yeah, stories. Yeah, echoing the same thing. Yeah, I guess we're, we're talking more about like costume elements, like, okay. um, say, Cradles from the new Cradles design from God of War, um, how much his design is like, like a, like a theme is saying, uh, a theme is like, okay, he's Nordic, he has, he has, uh, uh, fur pelt he has. Uh, yeah, there's gonna be like big elements yeah. that, that are uh, clearly um, like like when you look at uh, a dude with a beard and a big hammer, yeah. it reminds you of like oh that's a dwarf. Uh, like yeah. A, yeah, that's a dwarf, or that's a that's a character from a uh, traditional fantasy. Yeah, like Nordic. So it echoes uh, a Nordic European. Right away, uh, it's only two elements. Three like, elements. Braided, braided beard. Yeah. Big yeah. hammer. Yeah. Uh, so so it, it sounds simple, but it, it's not as obvious. You will see a lot of characters many times that uh, they're communicating random stuff. You're like, oh, he has a gun. He has also a samurai sword. And a uh, that's right. And you're like, yeah, well, it's, well, yeah. It's, that's not, I mean, unless you're a trigun. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's not a good design. I, I wouldn't say... Um, but then your story needs to support those. You, you, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then you're yeah. saying it's going to be a samurai world, uh, but a western, right? right? Yeah. So that's it. Like, you, if you're doing that by mistake, it's wrong. Uh, but if, if the world follows it, mm. then it's good design, yeah. uh, and, and and you're you're communicating the right things. Yeah. Um, so so that's something to to to, to keep. Uh, well, this is not. A, we're not teaching you guys how to do art. Uh, but it looks like it. Um, sorry, go ahead. Hey, so how does it pan out 
on a day-to-day -day basis, like when you're creating a character or, mm -hmm. or the life for that character, how does emotion play into that? Because, say, Monday, for instance, you, know, you start a character one way with an emotional conscience of you're happy. You come Friday and you're just pissed off in the world. I how see. does that correlate down the road? That's, uh, that's where I guess like just professional yeah, but, but yeah, that's, too, yeah, in, right. in comics, that's when having a, a strong uh, reproduction guideline oh, that's and right. knowing exactly where you're going. Don't start a comic and because you're so excited and you want to like jump to the final page and, and final look. Uh, do the whole freaking comic with balls, like stick man. Really dumb, really, uh, but quickly. Uh, realize okay what's the what's the mood what what uh, what's the the pace um, mm. uh, and, and figure all that before you start drawing like drawing drawing spending mm -hmm. time because because then you get lost and then one day you have a bad day and your character sucks and one day you don't want to keep drawing your sad character you want him to be like all cool and happy and, and, and athletic so then the, you start noting you know, differences on the... So basically just like establish the skeleton, the layout of yeah. your story, and then you can worry about the meat and the muscles, the, the veins and skins later. Yeah, get ready right before, get everything down yeah. um, for rainy days, really. Because like, yeah. you're gonna have days that you really don't want to even touch the pen and paper, and, but, but it needs to get done. Yeah, I guess this is a, the part where games and movies differ then. Sorry, games and comics differ because uh, comic book artists faces like way more mental adversary every single day. You're working in a vacuum throughout your own. Like meanwhile, in games, like we gotta come in at, at a certain hour and leave at a certain hour. Like you're paid by, you're paid on thought. You know, you, you have to come and perform. You're, you can't make excuses. Versus comics, you're you're at home. It's almost, it's almost like uh, quarantine never was never a thing for comic artists because they were born to quarantine. You know, like, they've always been. Doing this forever. forever, and so in a way, you guys are like people who do comics. You're facing like much more pressure than anyone else. Like, look at manga or 